and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Tosses on Demand. I'm Tara Lupton, your modern workplace and security architect. With me here, I have my co-hosts. Camille Herji is our Azure architect. Hi guys, good to be back here again. Senzo, our support team lead. Good day guys, welcome back. Good to have you back again with us. Since this is Cybersecurity Awareness Month, it is quite crucial that we discuss the impact that breaches have on businesses. Did you guys know there are approximately 6.5 million attacks per day? Did you say 6.5? Yes. 6.5 million? That's really crazy. It is quite a large number. We as Tosses On Demand are positioned to help with the security journey of our partners. Today's discussion will be around an attack that occurred at Experian. In 2020, they suffered a significant data breach where a rogue employee accessed their sensitive data while being terminated. This breach exposed the personal data of millions of individuals, leading to severe regulatory scrutiny and reputational damage. The breach highlighted vulnerabilities, internal controls, and the need for robust security measures to prevent unauthorized access. So guys, looking at the breach that occurred at Experian, what specific measures could have been taken to prevent a rogue employee from accessing unauthorized sensitive information. That's that's quite a crazy. I'm I'm sorry that I, I'm still stuck on that 6.5 million number it's that large. you mentioned, which is absolutely ridiculous. The more we need to put more focus on the security. Yes. Um, so basically, um, the unfortunate event of that uh, rogue employee um, who managed to get uh, access to the data could have prevented by means of um, controlling the access, the access um, yes. of, of, of such data, I mean, amongst other things, of course. Yes. No. Control the access, do user access control policies, um, and, and just take it from there. Yes. It should be a must. Yeah, correct, Senzo. You know, and to add on that, we, we need to ensure that users and employees have the correct access. You know, we, we can't be a non-Exco member mm -hmm. and have access to the SharePoint directory of the executive files. Mm -hmm. So, true. so we need to ensure that users all have the correct access for their job and responsibilities. Yes, guys. And to mitigate this, what do you think could have been done in terms of the internal access control policies? Um, uh, one thing I can think of um, immediately, it, is, it comes to mind, is, is um, user access reviews. Yes. Um, from a perspective of, we don't know what kind of access this user had, whether they have been an admin before, yes. but if you conduct regular access reviews, mm. you are able to pick up who Where? still has that access. Yes. And to add to what Senzo mentioned in all now, you know, we need to have strict access controls as yes. well. Yes. So apply the methodology of uh, least privilege. Yes. You know, make sure you are who you are and you have access to only the documents you require. Yes. You always use them Yeah, always use them. Now that's true. Don't you think that additional multi-layer security could have also been enforced on this rogue employee's account? Of course, man. Of course. Um, look, um, first of all, we, we cannot have a rogue employee still being able to, to log in. Data, to, yes. to, so it, it keeps on going back to the controls internally. Yes. What are you, well, what are you guys doing about your audits? Um, uh, what is, uh, what's about the process of, of, of uh, terminating users? Yes, what is the offboarding so, of what a is user? The offboarding policy? So it's, like it's important, you know, we, we have the correct policy in place when a user enters an organization mm -hmm. and more importantly, an exit policy. So when an uh, employee's employment contract is terminated, we need to ensure that we take him off whatever access he had, yes. you know, remove all access controls mm. that he did have. Yes, and looking at this, guys, as internally as tasks on demand, mm -hmm. how are our security uh, protocols in place for such instances? Well, I'll speak from a point of 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 because it's something that I work with yes. on a, on a, so let me say basis. monthly basis. Yes. We we have a process of of user onboarding, user so. termination. You know, it's a strict process. Whenever someone leaves, as soon as we get the go ahead remove access. There's a list that you need to check, remove this, remove from here, remove from here. So um, the offboarding process needs to be refined and which is one of the things that we really, really make sure happens. Don't you think those reports and those policies need to be reviewed either quarterly, uh, monthly, or just in case, you know, Absolutely. things change in a business yes. and you mm. might lose somebody 100%. And, and somebody else might need to take over a specific role. Shouldn't this be then um, reviewed at least Quarterly. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, no, 100%. At, at Tarsus on Demand as well, Terrell, 
we review all our policies for entry exit policies make sure it's current and up to date yes so because things uh, systems changed yes user access you know in terms of our groups and so forth that we create yes. you know that's constantly changing yes, and evolving exactly. there's, there's there's a lot that can be missed and uh, the more you review policies the better you're able to, to update it yes. yes now that's that's perfectly true guys looking at the regulatory scrutiny that Experian might have faced on this is there measures that tosses on demand can help in terms of the scrutiny around you know compliance around reports and and procedures so yeah 100 percent Harold. you know as part of the microsoft stack yes uh organizations can utilize microsoft purview you know which has yes. all the data compliance measures in place you know by applying sensitivity labels yes. Yes. onto documents and policies and procedures yes 100 yes. percent um on that note of, of uh, microsoft purview which is quite an amazing tool it already has these frameworks built into it yes. um, quite a number of them that you as a company if you need to comply to this framework you simply select this is what i need to comply with microsoft the tool will tell you okay this is what's recommended this is where you are slacking which is really something um, that we can provide to you. and it can help as well since you know with achieving an iso certification for the organizations and that's also very important because 100%. it also ties into how you as a business is working with other businesses data so it's very important that you know that is in place yes that is very insightful guys regarding training and you know awareness training for users how do you think that will tie into what we're discussing today it's it's always going to be a thing Tara. let's be honest um again looking back at a multi-layered approach from the bottom up start with the end users yes um train your end users um make them aware that guys this is the issue we've got threats coming up mm -hmm. be aware it's an awareness training yes, yes. Um, report these issues to the business yes. if you see something malicious or um suspicious, suspicious report to the IT yeah i i think you know knowledge is power guys true. that's true it's important that our employees you know go for this awareness training every month yes. and it's important that companies, you know, simulate fish, fishing testing. So, yes. and those that fail the test, you know, can be brought in for further testing. So we have our employees at a standard and we're all aware of these things now yes. that's going on on a daily basis. That is so true. And with that fishing simulation, um, you know, exercise, it gives users the, the knowledge of how it is engineered and how attacks, you know, uh, come about because they're ever changing and it's never the same the, the second time around so that is very important and that helps businesses a lot so further to this guys how can businesses implement a culture that encourages employees to further report what they have found or what they have seen or what they've received in terms of an email uh what i would say is touching one we just mentioned before now again um, make sure that you encourage your users to come forth yes um, even if it looks as if it's the simplest thing that what is this you're getting an email from the ceo but the ceo meantime is not even in the country that's true or whatever that um true. report that kind of report activity, yeah you know 100%. Uh, make it a safe environment for, uh, for for the for the users to be able to come forth and say hey um i'm seeing this am i do i need to be worried and so forth so true and what that don't you think that a reporting structure once they have given people what the IT department what has been found that there should be a reward for it. It would be nice to it would, yeah it would be nice to incentivize it. You know the more familiar the more you do this training you're gonna get more familiar and you know you're not gonna fall for the same fishing test each and every Good time. Night. So there should be some sort of incentive. That's true. Unless if you're a fish yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> yeah um yeah well good good conversations but i just had a thought quickly uh yeah guys regarding um compliance and the whole thing around compliance looking at experience and the type of business they run mm. um what can we do and what, what can we offer um to our businesses out there to ensure that they do sort of comply with this gdprs pop years how can we assist them basically that's true senzo that is a very good question yeah. you're posing there 
With Microsoft Compliance Center, you know, it is able to provide the customers with the tools yeah. around their compliance and the security posture. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it is a vast platform that, you know, has integrated solutions mm -hmm. that is based on what has been found within the environment. Mm -hmm. So That's don't you think that will help them in terms yeah, for of, sure. you know, complying and complying a good security posture? Yeah, for sure. And, and it's constantly changing as well, Terrell. Yes. You know, with, I don't know, we mentioned this already, but mm -hmm. The threats are, uh, there's new threats coming up each and every day. every day. So the great part is the Microsoft Compliance Center would assist us as it's constantly changing and updated. So we need to ensure that we keep our security score as high as we can be. That's true. Precisely, precisely. That's true, guys. Thank you so much, guys, for this insightful conversation. Are there any final thoughts that you might want to share with our audience? Yeah, like, um, so thank you so much for joining, as Terrell mentioned. And just to all the organizations out there, it's important that we keep our organization safe and secure. You know, apply the methodology of least privilege. Make sure that we give users access to the documents that they require. Um, yeah. Yeah, good, good thoughts there, Camille. Um, I, I'm just I'm gonna go back to the nature of the breach again where a rogue employee mm. so make sure that when someone leaves the company you follow the correct processes yes. terminate remove access that's very important. right yeah so it's obviously something we can help build for you in terms of a policy and so forth we also do offer a free assessment a security assessment in your Microsoft 365 or Azure environment, um, this is something that we can come forth for you and maybe see where you stand. Yes, that is a great offering and thank you so much for the conversation guys. And to our view viewers for engaging us today, please note that this is a pivotal discussion around cybersecurity. Until next time, stay safe and continue to keep your environment secure.